All right, ladies and gentlemen, and those in cyberspace, welcome to Focus on Liberia. Good afternoon, and welcome to our broadcast here. Today is Thursday, and we are having a special edition of our program here at Focus on Liberia. In today's edition of our show, we are talking about coronavirus. This virus has been around for some time now, and we are all aware of it and the impact it's having on our daily lives. So this is where you need to be. We have uh, a panelist here that will be looking into these issues surrounding coronavirus. Welcome to the show. I am here at Sonicie, hosting along with my partner, Dennis Ja. Welcome to the broadcast. Hit the share button and share the show with your friends. Let's get some better understanding on the pandemic that is impacting our life in a most serious way. In the discussion, of course, like I said, we will be looking at coronavirus. We will be looking at the infectious rate, how many persons are affected, death, and even those who have recovered. We will talk about that uh, in the US and as well globally. Why are some safety tips? Are these tapes actually working? Are these tapes actually making impact? Uh, because people are trying to follow these protocols, and yet we continue to hear that coronavirus is still on the increase. So this is where you need to be. And also, not forgetting about the vaccine, uh, is there hope here at the end of the tunnel? I will now turn things over to my partner, Dennis ja Dennis, Corona, let's talk about it. I'm ready. The whole of 2020, man, went into coronavirus, and uh, I've been working from home, my shoulder, everything hurting here. But uh, we're glad to have some uh, people that know a thing or two about coronavirus and what we can do to, pre protect, protect, uh, to protect ourselves and protect our loved ones. So we are so glad to have you all watching. Uh, introducing first, we have, and they are all joining all from one county in Minnesota, and they're going to talk about that later on. We have patients at all. Patient, welcome to Focus on Liberia. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you. We also have Jude Nandi. Jude, Nand Jude, welcome to Focus on Liberia. Thank you so much. I'm glad to be here. Thank you. Last but not the least, Valetta Masakwe. Valetta, welcome to Focus on Liberia. All of you are joining us for the first time. So in a special way, we say welcome. Thank you. All oh, right. And uh, normally we give you our ceremonial cola nut to say welcome for the first time on Focus mm -hmm. on Liberia. We are glad that you have come. I accept the cola nut. Mr. C.A., let's do this about Corona. We heard a very beautiful song from the beginning. Let us do our best to protect our loved ones from coronavirus. Thank you again, ladies and gentlemen, for coming. All right. Uh, at this time, we... We will get to our panelists here, you know, to take just uh, at least 30 seconds to say a little bit about themselves and, you know, what have they been up to with the corona? What contribution, what have, what role have they been playing in the fight against corona? And let us start with uh, patient uh, at all. Again, welcome. Uh, a little bit Thank by you. yourself and what you've been up to in this fight against corona. 30 seconds, please. Thank you, Anthony. Um, it is good to be on this uh, program today. Well, we all know coronavirus has really devastated uh, the nation, nations of the world, and uh, everyone is waiting and hoping that it will be over soon. But we have come to tell you us that all hope is not lost. And so, um, Fortify City. I'm a pastor at the Fortified City International Ministries, and we have partnered with the Dakota County uh, Care Act project okay. to bring awareness and to tell people the way to be safe and to keep their families safe and to reduce the death rate. So we are all about conscientizing people. We are all about creating awareness. We are all about giving hope to those that are devastated at this time. Thank you so very much. Also, we have uh, Jewel here in studio. Uh, again, we can't welcome you enough. A little about you and what role have you been playing in this fight against Corona? 30 seconds. 
Oh, thank you so much. Uh, my name is Jude Nadi. I live in Brooklyn Center here. And um, for the past uh, eight months, very, from the very beginning of uh, COVID-19, we came together to set up a tax force um, on COVID to see how our people can communicate and be part of, um, um, our people can get information and be part of fight against COVID-19. So um, all the way, we've been trying to share information, reach out to stakeholders, talk to government agencies, and also reach out to our community. So um, part of it is on business part, how they can survive, how they can reopen, and the other part is uh, on uh, um, awareness and uh, information sharing, so how they can be proactive in uh, avoiding COVID and also uh, reducing the spread. So it has been very, um, you know, um, very, very intense year uh, period in our lives. And uh, we are glad that this year is ending, but we still have a lot of work to do. So we thank um, patients for organizing this and also the Federal County for funding this to be able to reach out to our community and share the information that's so critical to them to um, fight this COVID. Thank you. And thank, thank you. Thank you, Jude. Just give a little more background about uh, the work you're doing, this uh, information and education uh, project that you have embarked on as a group, and uh, how far has this been going ever since you started? Okay. Um, it's the Minnesota African Co uh, Coalition Co um, COVID-19 Tax Force. So different organizations um, came together, uh, Minnesota, Minnesota African Coalition, uh, ASA, uh, Labor Liberian Business Association, ADC. So a lot of organizations came together and then we put the tax force together and the, the primary focus was to share information about COVID as well as uh, uh, when the time the federal government and the state, they were uh, um, you know, uh, sending out palliative to help uh, businesses to either uh, maintain their workforce or to restart. So we are sharing that information as well, and also helping people to apply for unemployment, for uh, PPP, which is Paycheck Protection Program from federal government to help uh, businesses to um, uh, uh, retain their workforce and then deal with COVID. And also, we, also, uh, we are live on um, um, Facebook, uh, sharing information about hand washing, about uh, uh, keeping safe distance, and other information we have with the community. So it went on uh, for almost six months. And then um, uh, for now, we don't do monthly, uh, weekly uh, information as we do, but we still, still share information. Because at the very beginning, we thought that COVID would just uh, come and go, but it did not. But uh, um, we've made some progress. One big progress we made was that at the initial beginning of the COVID, the state government gave uh, $30 million to uh, small businesses. But our community, African immigrant community, we were not prepared. We didn't know what was going on and we didn't get uh, much of the funding. So we went back to the, um, to the state. Uh, we organized ourselves with different groups and we spoke to legislators as well as the governor and we pressed on them to um, give out $20 million for micro businesses those who make less than $250,000 annual revenue on their business and who have zero to five employees. So we pushed and actually that was passed in the legislature and the governor signed it. And uh, we're happy that some of our community members were able to get funding through that our effort. And then we have all done, done some other things um, along the line since the COVID started to not only within our community, but also for those who, who were impacted um, uh, by COVID, the low-income uh, people, as well as uh, uh, small businesses who didn't have much resources to fight COVID as the big ones did. Th th thank you. I'm, I'm assuming before you come here, I heard of a paycheck. Did, I, did, you, did you say paycheck protection? Yeah, PPP, oh, so, so, Paycheck so, 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 Protection you, Program. You got your paycheck protection? or? <laughs> <laughs> so that was from the federal government. It was SBA. Uh, the program was uh, tailored to small businesses. And it was meant to help them to defray cost of um, workers so that instead of just uh, you know letting the workers go because of COVID, they were able to pay workers for at least 10 weeks, depending on the, on the level of um, um, business they have and number of employees they have. 
So they were able to pay workers within that period. So that was PPP. It was very popular among business community then. Thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this is Focus on Liberia. We are in discussion of coronavirus, that's COVID-19. We have an educational team here. Tell us about some safety measures and what we can do within this difficult time. Back to you, Asuni. Thank you, and I'm going to go to uh, Valenta also to say a little about herself and her role in this fight against COVID-19. Valenta uh, Massaqua, as you all know, and I'm not from Dakota County. I'm only helping out. I am actually from Anoka County. Let me be, let me say that first before people think I moved to Dakota County. <laughs> and so I've, my role in the fight, what do you call it? You guys all, everybody in the population or everywhere else call us the hero. I'm actually working the front lines. I've been working since the inception of coronavirus. I work in a major hospital here in Minnesota in the Twin Cities, and I work, my unit is a designated COVID post. So when we had the unknowns, we were working, and now we act like we know a lot better, and we're still working on the front line. So I see it every day. I live it because there are people in my staff that have gotten sick, and so it's real for me. I come home, and it's real for me because I try to at least prevent my family and loved ones from getting the coronavirus. So I'm doing that every time I go to work. So that has been my role. And I try to educate my friends and families about the virus and that it is real. Because if you give them real stories, sometimes people will like go forward. But if they don't know what's going on, then they try to think it's not real. But I give them real stories to be able to to work to fight to all stopping the spread of this virus. All right, thank you so very much again, folks in cyberspace. We are talking Corona here. Join us as we go into this conversation. We are having a sober panel discussion here about this deadly virus that has been decimating our lives since it emerged on the surface of this planet. So we have had a pandemic upon a pandemic, historically speaking, I've not been around for so long, but the history books tell me these things been around, they come and go. So tell me, how different is coronavirus from any other that we had in the past? And let me start with you, uh, Nanda. Talk about Jude. Oh, hello. Yeah, yes, go ahead. How is Corona different or similar to any other pandemic or virus that we've ever had? Um, so when it comes to virus, uh, we live with virus all the time. But when it goes out of the way to start killing people and destroying the economy, as we witness it this time around, it has not been uh, um, happening for almost a century since the uh, 1918 pandemic. So this is worse following it after 100 years. So this is really um, very dangerous. One thing is that because of the spread, it can quickly spread from one person to another. And then another thing is that it's killing people. Some viruses actually help us to live. So they don't kill us, so live with them. But when it becomes dangerous and atta attack us as COVID-19 is doing, it then becomes something that we have to avoid and do everything possible to eliminate because um, nobody wants to die and nobody wants to see anybody die. So this is really different because it's very infectious. So it spreads from one person to another. It's deadly. It can kill people or it can destroy people. Or it can leave people with some uh, very bad uh, uh, side effects even after, after they recover. And then three, it's destroying our business and economy because we're afraid of anything we know or anybody we know by coming close together. So it has this remarkably different from what we've seen or know about virus. Thank you so very much. And let me come to you, uh, Valenta. Uh, coronavirus, from all indications, now seems to be more deadly. But then we hear from expert tools that some way somehow is similar to things like flu. So what is it about it that is making it 
uh, to be this deadly? Is it because people didn't know about it from the get go? I mean, why? So the coronavirus has been, there are some viruses that has been around for quite a while. Mm -hmm. And this one is almost like a mutated strain that has not been found in humans before. So people were not aware of it and they were not ready for it. They didn't know how it would treat humans. Likewise, the flu and stuff, you know how it would treat you because it's been around for a long time. This one was a new one that was spawning like animals and stuff. And then all of a sudden it's traveled to humans. And so now treating this one is deadly because like, like Jude said, when they attack you, you probably sometimes you have symptoms and sometimes you don't have symptoms and you don't know you're spreading it if you don't have symptoms. And the symptoms can come from mild to being severe with people and you spread it and it spread quickly. It can be in the air. It's airborne as well. Unlike like the, the, the flu virus, which is sometimes airborne, but you know the person has the flu and you will protect yourself. This one, you don't know sometimes if somebody has symptoms. So they're standing there with symptoms and you don't know, and they're talking to you in your face or around. And even when they leave the place, sometimes those particles linger for a little bit and somebody can then infect it. So, so my question is, uh, from the inception, there were, I want to say, conflicting you know, reports or things that we're hearing as to where this comes from, how it can be prevented, uh, how many, how feet apart can we stand? Is it a droplet? It has not been very, you know, clear as to, you know, how people were getting it. And there was a lot of confusion from the beginning. But well, patient, are we clear on this now? Do we have a clear cut as to how this is transmitted and what we need to do? You are on mute. Okay, I got you. Yeah. We have some information about the way in which it's spread. And we know it's it's airborne. We know it can be like droplets, so many information. Because first, we're only limited to one way. But now, I mean, it, it's all over the place. I mean, you can, you can pass it on by interaction. The closer you get to someone, that's why it is important uh, you take note of the six feet distance. And that's why it is important that you wear the mask because you could be very, in very close proximity with someone who is infected or knowing to you. And you could be talking with them and uh, they could pass it on. And uh, it is also important it could be on surface and you encounter the surface. And that's why it is important that you disinfect and um, the same as you could shake somebody's hand, somebody that is infected or touch something that already infected. And so at the end of the day, you pass it on or you yourself get infected in the process. So, I mean, it could be contacted in different ways. And uh, that's why the safety measure, it is important that we take note of these safety measures. It is important that we keep spraying the news that you can have you can get it anywhere you can get it from anyone coronavirus is not rated on the faces of people there are some that show symptoms that they have it there are some that don't show any symptoms at all so the more aware we are of our environment by taking the necessary precautions the more safe we are going <coughs> to be and the more safe our family are going to be all right, thank you so very much. And let's come to the number of cases that has been reported now uh, worldwide and even nationally, talking about states as well. We will all agree that the trend has been on an upward spiral. And if you look at the medical facility in America for particular, how we have trained professionals, the equipment, and yet, the cases continue to rise. 
Should we be scared? Is there any indication that we will turn the corner soon? Because I'm showing the uh, the statistics right now, 82 million worldwide. So can the trend, what does the trend tell us? That is my question. It tells us, I think it tells us that uh, we, we were not really taking this thing serious as we also, you know, people were, people, some people thought it was a myth. Even there were there are some news reporter that thought it was it, this the whole thing was a hoax, and we come within our community, our different communities like the immigrant community. People just think this this does not exist. I mean, those were some of the things that happened along the way, and uh, a lot of people did not believe that this coronavirus it was something that they could just you know contact easily, and there was some there was some. Uh, rumors going around that oh if you are this color you can't get it and you are that color you can have it those were wrong informations that were passed along but I believe that now that we have information that is all there and people and we are we are still spreading the information how can, we can keep safe I believe that the, the numbers is going to come down and uh, um, I also believe, believe I'm a Christian and I also believe that God is at work and God is also interested in people gaining knowledge, gaining understanding, gaining wisdom. That's why the scripture declare lack of knowledge, my people perish. So if you don't have the information available, indeed you will perish. It's not that it is not available, but it's because you don't pay attention. And it is because you, you are not doing all you can to make sure you get those informations that are available. And so we go back to our safety measures. We need to wear the mask. The mask will help you because it's, it is it is a respiratory uh, uh, sickness. You can you can it can get in your nose. It can get in your mouth. So we need to wear our mask. Mm. And, and, and before we, also get, come we in need to before we get deep into the safety measure, we talk about. Yeah. I just want to piggyback on uh, the question as soon as asked as to uh, why this the spike. And you, you give some reason. I mean, I want to go to Judah and say, really, why was there so much confusion? You know, we have medicine, we have trained people. Why was there so much confusion? And why was there so much misinformation and myth around this particular corona? Is it because it was new or why? Yeah, uh, <clears throat> I think um, there's no one single answer to that because... Um, COVID-19 came into U.S. at the height of uh, election. So, so many things were injected into election because politics is about winning and it doesn't, it's not about rights. So people can say anything as long as they want to win. So that, that, that was one part. And then the second part was that, as uh, Valetta said, this is a new uh, virus. So nobody knew exactly how it was going to behave. So everybody was trying to find solution to it. And then a uh, virus is very, very potent um, in the sense that it has power. So as people observe some knowledge and try to um, pursue it in that direction, it changes. So, and when it changes, they'll come back again and say, oh, this thing has changed. But people just feel that uh, as long as um, um, a doctor says, or uh, um, an, an expert says something, it's, it's just uh, definite, it's not. So virus is trying everything to that you can do to bring us down and then it changes. And then when, when experts communicate to us, we just assume, oh, they're not saying the truth or they have some ulterior motives behind it. So, so many things came. And another thing is uh, social media. Social media has played a, a very important role in different way we communicate. And anybody can post anything on um, social media. And then people, when they read it, they just feel, oh, I saw it on the internet or I saw it on Facebook. But it could be destructive, it could be helpful, it could be anything. So depending on the motive of whoever puts something, we can't uh, you know, nail down exactly what they want to do. So uh, I think we'll be seeing things like this going forward because, as they say, communication is uh, democratized and anybody can has access to internet and can form opinion and then people you know, may fall to it or people may resist it. So um, there's no one single answer to that, but I, there are just too many way, things that are just pushing us to this level of mistrust we have uh, regarding this COVID-19. 
So I would like to piggyback on what you just said about the virus, how it spread. Like he's like we said before. First, it was new, and like he talked about politics. I think, especially in the U.S., I probably won't say globally, but especially in the U.S., politics played a lot in spreading the virus the way it spread. Like in the U.S., we have like what today I was looking 19 million cases. If from day one, we have probably listened to scientists and say, okay, do wear your mask and social distance. And we have put down laws that say, wear your mask and do this. Who knows? We probably would not have gotten to this number, but Mm -hmm. we put too much politics in it. And also like Jude said, social media, there are a lot of myths about it. All people are just trying to do this. It's not a virus. It's just something that people are bringing to do this. So all those things play a part in us reaching 82 million. Like when I was looking at it this morning, I'm like 82 million people. And just in the U.S. alone, 337,000 people have died. Who knows? According to CDC now. Seems to have some trouble there with Valletta. Yes, uh, her connection. Oh, the uh, us to say, hey, okay, we see a light at the end of the tunnel somewhere because we have all these things that have been put in place. Right. Let me come to you, patient, uh, still on why. My first question is, so what is true now? First, we used to hear that the children don't get it, uh, people of color and all that other thing. But uh, based on what Valletta said has to different reason and what also uh, Jude alluded to, to what extent do we blame also the church or, or religion or faith as to the spread? Because we're in the church, you know, I'm a mission boy, and we say the the more if you don't if you wear masks to church, it means your faith is not strong enough. Because even if your faith is as small as a mustard seed, you can say uh, Corona be removed and is removed. So, to <laughs> what what role has the church played in spreading this deadly coronavirus? <laughs> Like the like the rest of the people say, now one thing can be blamed, you know. Mm-hmm. There's so many factors that are involved. The church, the church didn't know about this uh, virus in the first place. And uh, the church are people, and they themselves were just encountering uh, what it is, what we, we are going through. So the, the church also needed information, like I said earlier, they need information. And when you have information, you pass it on. If God, by you being in the church, does not mean you are exempted from information. No. If at the place, the place that we should acquire information and the place that we should we should seek information what we is the people that are going to church is Christian that should be the one looking for information. Because the word of God says, in all you're getting, get wisdom, get understanding, get knowledge. So God is in favor of people getting information, in favor of people doing research. If things are happening around you in your community that you have no idea about, you need to do research. You need to ask questions. You need to talk to some professionals, people that have uh, 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 the knowledge about that particular situation. So the church is like any other person and they needed information and they did not have that information. So they, they, they could not pass on that information. So no one person is at fault for the spreading of the virus. And all of us, we are working towards making sure this virus is, I mean, is a thing of the past. And, and, so and even in the Bible, there were times that virus, they had a pandemic in the Bible. Yeah. So. And, and, and there were, there were instructions. Ask this question quickly. There were instructions that were given uh-huh. during I, the time I, I, of the pandemic. There right. were instructions that were given, and the people adhered to those instructions. Right. That's why it was surprising to see church folks say, "There's a bomb in Gilead, so don't don't wear masks here." This, but anyway, <laughs> go ahead, Anthony. Yeah, and and that's what I wanted to bring because uh, I, I I mean. I don't want to make this thing biblical because uh, that talk is science, right? But there are there are people who rely on faith in understanding the the complex things around us. So we have a scripture here that's saying uh, also it causes all both and small and great, both rich and poor, both free and slave, to be marked on the right hand 
and on the forehead. So what I'm trying to get at here is that some people are saying, okay, this thing might be true because it was talked about in the Bible. That's the mark of the beast. Yeah. And there are things that precede the mark of the beast. Mm -hmm. And they Rapture are saying the coronavirus, the first, is, is, is that, is, 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 is that, it? it? Scripturally, that is not it. The word of God tells us, <laughs> the word of God tells us there will be signs. There will be signs of the time. And the first thing that needs to happen before the mark of the beast come is that the gospel must be preached to every creature. All it right. must be preached. It All must right. go everywhere. Let me so the Bible. Has, oh no, let oh, leave, leave the Bible. Question. Let, let come to science. Uh, let uh -huh. leave the Bible. Uh, uh -huh. Let come to science because, like you said, the, the word must be preached. Let come to science. Um, what I'm asking about here is testing. One of the things that people are saying, oh, you have to test, you have to know your status. How good is testing? How much help can it do in fighting this uh, coronavirus? What's the significance of testing? The testing is, testing is very, is very, I mean, essential. It is necessary mm -hmm. because when you are tested, you know your state. Mm -hmm. When you are tested, you are better able to protect yourself and protect those that are around you. You are able to protect those that are around you. For example, if you are tested positive, you're going to quarantine yourself because you don't want the next person to get sick because of you. So when you are tested, it helps save others that associate with you, others that are connected to you. So it's good that we are tested and we know our state, in other words, to have, help curtail the spread of this virus. So it is necessary. I believe every one of us need to be tested. Dennis? Right. Let's, do you want to say something? Because we want to move to the safety measures now. Oh, okay. I just want to um, yeah, say that um, uh, during the uh, protest against the murder of George Floyd, um, I led um, a lot of uh, conversation and the uh, protest. And um, um, I, yeah, I came very close to people during that time. I had to self quarantine myself and I had to go and test until my test became negative. So I've taken tests before, and if there's any need for me to take tests, I'll do so again. And tests, the, most of the tests we do, they are 99.9% .9 efficient. So it doesn't do anything just to show your status. It's necessary, because that's the only way we can know if we need to double down, if we need to isolate, or if we need to seek help, or if we are okay, and then see how we can continue to protect ourselves and the community. And the biggest, one of the biggest way we are told to protect ourselves is the wearing of masks. Let's talk a little bit about masks. Again, there was some concept, misconception and uh, misinformation that, hey, mask doesn't do anything. People will say, don't wear masks. So let's talk about masks. What kind of mask should we be wearing? and how effective it is. So there are a lot of masks on the market that people sell the cloth mask. There, like, if you look at the mask and you can kind of smell everything around you, chew it, then you probably need to double your mask before you go out. You can just keep like the little tin mask is not going to really help you because if somebody sneezes around you and they don't have a mask or if they cough around you and they don't have a mask, there's a possibility that a little particle from that can come towards you. In healthcare now, we wear masks and we wear goggles or face shield, but not everybody in the community have a face shield. So you probably you want to get a mask that has some thickness to it not just those little tin masks. I know the little blue one they spread, they share in the stores and thing helps a lot because it has a little barrier. But keeping a six feet distance also help. It's not like because you have a mask, you should go close to people anyway. Even with a mask on, you still have to, to have those six feet distance, which is almost about two arms length distance. Mm -hmm. And there are ways in which you can wear the mask too that prevents you from catching Corona. I see a lot of people with a mask under their nose, probably thinking that the virus only spread through their mouth. No, you have to cover your nose and your mouth with the mask and put a little seal on top of it so that way particles don't slip through. 
I know for us who wear glasses, the glasses get fogged out if you do that, but there are ways you can do it too. You can put like a little tissue paper inside the under of the mask to the top there, and it kind of helps to seal, keep it in so that way you're not fogging off your glasses. And some people talk about N95. N95 mask is not for the regular population. In healthcare, you get fit tested for the N95 mask. I see people wearing it outside. It's good, but if you're not fit tested, it means you have break of all the seal all around it. You have to be fit tested for the mask you wear, especially if it's, if it's an N95. So if you're looking for masks and you're making some, just make sure you make it with a lot more barrier than just the normal, just like tin one that you buy and you can just sneeze through it or smell every smell around you through it to be able to better protect yourself. Mm. Dude, yeah. is there any downside to, to, to wearing a mask? Well, uh, everything has downside. Um, one thing is that um, if uh, my wife wears mask, I won't ha- see her face pretty well. So um, <laughs> beyond, <laughs> beyond that, <laughs> beyond that um, it's not comfortable. Uh, some people just push against masks because they, they, they don't make them comfortable. They don't look good. So, and again, uh, for those who have some um, uh, health issues, it could impair their breathing because what mask does is to filter your air. So it reduces the amount of air you can breathe. But um, the way it's designed is that you still be okay. You will not have any issue. But if somebody who struggles to breathe because of health issues, then those, those people might have an um, additional uh, challenge uh, using mask. And um, in addition to what my sister said about mask, uh, Valetta, I will just I will add that um, at the very beginning of the pandemic, mask was in uh, very short supply, but now it's coming back gradually. So if anybody's going to buy a mask, uh, you buy the one that has three plies. That means three layers. So that one fits us pretty well, and it's cheap. So uh, there are also some of them, the they label for medical, but it's not N95. Uh, is is uh, still available, so that one is also pretty effective as well. So if you see that one, you can use it. And um, as she said, if you get ma- if you wear a mask, it just says preventive. It's not hundred um, percent. Uh, doesn't give you hundred uh, percent protection, but at least to prevent uh, um, this curtail the spread of the virus. So whoever is going, one thing is to limit where we go and how we interact with people, and then whether we wear a mask or not. Just keep that social distance uh, as much as we can. And if it's not necessary um, to go out or do something, just um, avoid it because if we we don't expose ourselves and expose others, we'll go back to normal life as soon as we can. Christian, there are some of us who are making some fashion statements with these masks now, especially when it comes to uh, these uh, African attires. I don't know if, if we're supposed to be, you know, taking our kinte and making marks to that, or is that is that safe? And the second thing we heard also is, uh, you if you wore a mask, you are protecting the person more who is who doesn't have a mask than yourself. I don't know if that's still true. Well, as long as the mask you are wearing, whether it's kinte, whether it's cloth, as long as it has layers and. Uh, you can smell what is outside, then you have a, some assurance that you are uh, like 98 or 97 percent protected. And uh, the marks, you're wearing the marks for you, you're wearing the marks for the next person. So it's both ways. It's not only for you, but for the next person. So if I'm wearing marks and the next person is not wearing one, how does that work? Who is at more risk? Uh, both of you are at risk, I mean, because if the person is infected, uh, they, they, they remember the virus is in the air, so they could be breathing and you're not taking into consideration your six feet distance, or even you might take into consideration the distance, but there could be some droplets in the air and you mm-hmm. it could fall on your mask or you could fall on your clothes or whatever and you get home and the way in which you remove the mask or the way in which you dispose of the mask, you know, you, you could also con- contact the, the, the virus. So yeah. that's why it is necessary for every one of us to be protected, but everyone should, should wear the mask, especially when you're in the presence of people that are not part of your household. 
Mm. Mr. C, do you sometimes attempt, you wearing my somebody not wearing my, do you sometimes think about punching them in the nose because they are yes. going to be too sick? No, I, I've, I've never <laughs> had those kind of thoughts uh, crossing my mind to punch anybody in the face. <laughs> I mean, it just mean wondering uh, whether or not that person is taking it serious. And I know uh, Joe talked earlier about the political impact this thing has had, you know, from the get go. There are some people, for political reasons, say, no, I'm not going to wear masks. And, you know, and it's only uh, compounding the problem and, and, and have to increase it. So I think the issue of the max is, is not a political statement. It's something that we all need to take serious. So, no, I won't punch anybody in the face. Maybe tell them to do so. <laughs> Valata, what are other safety measures we need to... I've uh, told uh, us. Well, Mr. C hasn't thought about punching somebody in the face, but I thought about slapping somebody on the head if they put the mask under their nose. That just irritates me. Like, I almost want to say it all and just go without it. Yeah. Um, one thing I do is that when I go to a store and um, if I'm on the checkout line and uh, maybe the the stop um, a person is not putting some on some other mask. safety measures. A lot of us already do that when you go to the bathroom, Wash. but hand washing should be your key yeah. whenever you go out. Oh, did I lose you guys? Whenever you go, oh, yeah, you are kind of in and out of the letter. Can still hear? We, we can hear you, but if you if your connection is not that great. If there are other people attached to the Wi-Fi, tell them to, to get off so that you, you can have exclusive right to that Wi-Fi. I know the right. I've seen the kids. You know, everybody who now, so it's not easy. Everybody got a gadget. So I think right. I definitely need to tell them, hey, so I need to tell everybody to put the gadget down. Yeah. Let them so put it on. I'll probably go. mute myself and scream me and tell people to turn off the... Yeah, let's, okay. bring in, let's bring in Jude while you try to fix that issue. Jude, you try to punch someone in the nose in the, in the supermarket. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I just, what I do is that if I, if I come to check out and the person checking out for me is not wearing a mask or maybe it's just dangling only at the chin or maybe only the mouth, I just go to another line. And if, if I can't, I may just leave that store. Seriously, it gave me irritated and people shouldn't be doing that. So uh, it's, it's two-way trick. Uh, you protect yourself and you protect others around you. And if somebody's wearing a mask and somebody the other person is not, that what means is that if the person wearing a mask, if that person coughs, the droplet does not spread as much because the mask will contain it. But somebody who doesn't wear a mask, if that person coughs, it then it goes to that person, the other person's face. So who is fooling who? That's not good. It's not, uh, it's not cool in any way. Yeah, let's talk more about other safety measures. Uh, Valetta started talking about hand washing and uh, patient mentioned about taking the mask off. I personally really, when I get off the show, so I, I don't even, I'm not even mindful of taking that mask off. So what are some of the things we need to do taking off the mask and what are we supposed to do exactly when we take it off? Let's talk about more safety measures. Yeah, you're taking off the mask, the, 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 the loop that goes behind, you, you, you start from the loop and, you know, flip it to the other end using the other loop and then you don't touch the outside of the mask because the outside is the part that is exposed to the air. So when you remove the mask, you, you dispose of it. And other safety measures, uh, we have to wash our hands. Wash your hands properly, wash like 20 seconds. We have to wash our hands for 20 seconds. People usually just put their hand under the water and adjusting, you wash your hands, you put the soap in your hands, rub it, you, and yes. use the, the your finger, your fingertip to wash the inside. Use the other fingertip to wash the other inside, or between your fingers, up and down. You know to be able to make sure you got everything you know properly and clean before you rinse for twenty seconds. And and patient, I've been, let me ask this: uh, you talk about disposable marks, and not everybody uh, using those. Uh, some people now are trying to be a little uh, economical about it, so they're making cloth mark, and those ones are not uh, disposable, they are washable, and so people use it. 
when they're done, they just put it somewhere, they're ready to go. To that is, uh, that is. How much risk is with that type of mask? It's still risky. You know, mask is okay, but when you dispose of the mask, you're supposed to wash it. Mm -hmm. So if you're wearing a mask to protect you and you went outside mm -hmm. and you, you don't know what is in the air, but per adventure, there was someone that had COVID-19 and, you know, it, you, you, your mask got contaminated and you took that mask and just took the mask and just put it in your house and put it in your table or put it in your room or where, wherever you put it. I mean, you're still spreading the, the virus because you have not you have not washed the mask. So those of, those of us that's wearing a cloth mask, when you remove them, you need to wash the mask. You need to wash it. And then you can, you can, you can save it for the next time you wear it. That's why you need to have more than one. So there's an expectation that the, uh, the virus is going to die. So oh, yeah. some will leave the mask in the car. So I, I come from work 5 o'clock, leave the mask in the car. So tomorrow when I'm going back to work at 8 o'clock, you've gone, what, 12 hours? So whatever is on that mask has died, and I'm going to use it the next day without washing it. How risky is that? Well, it, it's still risky because you, know, you, don't, you don't really know whether it has died. So it's good to always wear a clean mask. We will advise, I will advise anyone, I will tell anyone, encourage anyone, wear a clean mask every time because this is about safety. This is about safety. When it comes to masks, there's no economizing in wearing a mask. Have as many as possible so you can keep yourself safe, you can keep your family safe. And that is one of the reasons Dakota County, uh, through the CARE Act, has sponsored this initiative so we can bring the awareness and educate people about all the safety measures. Not only masks, not only washing hands, but we also need to clean our surfaces. We need to clean up. They have disinfectant. They have uh, uh, chlorax or whatever it is, um, cleaning solution you have that you can use. You can use it to clean your surfaces, handles, door handles, you know, and all that to make sure that you don't have something sitting on um, that is contamin contam that could contaminate you or contaminate the next person. And then it's talking it, it about is. safety. Hold on, uh, talking about safety. They uh, they could have counted uh, release a video talking about these safety measures and tips that we all need to apply daily. We'll play that video. It's forty eight seconds, and then we'll be right it's, back with you. It is the, the video was organized. The video was put together by the Forty Five City. All right, we just listened to the video released by the Dakota County on how people can prevent and protect themselves uh, against COVID-19. So tell me more about the video, especially how people, you know, uh, can be able to get help in the county. Patient. The video, um, the video was put together by Fortify City International Ministry. Mm -hmm. Who is also implementing the project, mm -hmm. um, the Care Act project? And this video is is about safety measures that is being applied. Wearing your mask, what, staying at least six feet from the next person, washing your hands, and cleaning your environment, sanitizing your environment. So the video is all about that. It's all about keeping safe. It's all about protecting your home, your loved ones, protecting your community so that we can we can reduce the spread of the COVID-19. Valenta, you were about to say something. Let me add to what, uh, let me ask you a question. You can go about and say the rest. The way your patient described the washing hands, can hand sanitizer do that? Well, if you're out and about, 
if you don't have soap and water, you do hand sanitize off for a little bit, but it's not keeping you safe. Like my little daughter, the 14 year old say hand sanitizer, it's just giving you clean dirt on your hands. Exactly. That's how I like to put it. Because even after you use the hand sanitizer and you come home and you wash your hands, you see that your hand is dirty. So like she said, it's just clean dirt. It just kind of gives you a little blanket of safety, a little bit that, okay, I'm a little safe before I can go and use soap and water. Uh, patient talk about 20 seconds. I like to say, sing the ABC song in your head to the end. And the proper way to do it is to wet your hands first and then put the soap and then do the friction. But a lot of us will put soap first before we put water. And then we just do, like she said, we just do it quickly and leave. But you have to really wash your hand all between your nails, underneath your nails and everything. And you talk about your mask being in the car and it's something that you use the next day. If you have a mask that is not disposable, when you're going in your house, I'm sure when you come from work, you go and take a shower or something, you can wash that mask and use some hot water and just hang it out to dry. We are all Liberians. Remember when you were back in school where you used to hang your clothes sometimes? If you don't want to chunk it in the dryer, if your refrigerator is not close to the wall, I'm just giving you a little Liberian tip. You can hang it up beyond it. That's hot air. It's going to make it dry. But just something you can chunk it in the dryer and so that heat alone too can help to kind of like kill some of the virus, but you can wash it on the hot water and be able to use it the next day rather than just grabbing the deli mask and putting it back on. So those are just some ways, like the hand washing, she talked about wiping down surfaces that have been touched and stuff. And you should also have like a bottle of hand sanitizer. Even if some family members are coming to visit you, you should have it and have a mask there if you are not sure about them. So just have stuff around the house that will clean your home, that will call, help you to keep you and your family safe and your your. Hmm. Jude, uh and another thing, another thing we need to use or we need to uh, be aware of when we use using sanitizer, hand sanitizer. Most of the time, people just think, well, uh, no, like, I look at the end of it. So that department, like, like, yeah. You are back, Fyodor. <laughs> I look at the Minnesota Department of Health website and it shows that private outside of healthcare, that's where it's spread even more. It's a lot, huge amount of places that is spread private in the community more than in healthcare facilities. So we need to do better outside our community and in our personal spaces. Hmm. Uh, Jude, let's talk man to man. You know, guys don't wipe <laughs> their hands for 20 <laughs> For one more year, one more to one more. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. So, so is it, is it really practical to spend all that time washing your hands? Do people do it? Uh, uh, you know, I, I don't. I don't stay that long washing my hands. So we we'll start to learn. I mean, this is uh, is changing the way we interact and the way we behave. So it's behavioral change for us. And as men. Um, it's no longer being mature. It's just more of uh, saving our lives and those around us. So washing hands and, um, and then uh, using soap and other measures, they are critically important because those things can save life. Uh, one thing that uh, uh, we can do is to reduce our interaction. Uh, if it's not because of work or going to grocery, something essential, we can avoid it. I know in our community, we like to party and would like to use every opportunity to socialize, which was very important to us as our culture and as a, as a people. However, with the change uh, we're seeing because of pandemic, we just have to reduce uh, those things that uh, we expose us. So we don't even have to go out there to be washing hands when it's not comfortable or we're not used to doing it. So if we just curtail to business, you know, essential things, I think it would be fine. So it won't be too much of a struggle. Thank you. And, and we'll, we'll come to the vaccines. But before that, we all watch TV. We all watch the uh, social media. And we see, for example, people in Liberia and other African countries, they don't observe any of those things. And we don't see the same rate like we see here. So it makes people to wonder, well, maybe this thing really doesn't exist. What's responsible for that, that a uh, People in Liberia, I see them on social media all the time. They are partying, they are in each other's faces. Most of them don't wear masks. And it looks like they are fine. What's going okay. on? With 
I think I, let me just jump in in this case. Um, I'm from Nigeria, and Nigeria is very, we have a very large number of people. Uh, they do that. However, my experience uh, in Nigeria before I came to the US, we don't have an autopsy to know what is killing people. Um, people die every day, regardless of any part of the world. But if you don't test to know exactly what kill people, how do we know is a virus or not? Um, I agree that um, there may not be you know, visible signs um, that some people are dying because of virus, but without testing, it's just more of an assumption. Um, United, United States tests more than any other country in Africa. So they test more millions of millions of people have been tested. If we, if, if we go back to Nigeria, how many people have been tested to know if they have virus or not? And then how many people have we uh, conducted autopsy to know if they died of COVID or not? So that's just one thing. There was a time that uh, 150 people died in Kano just within one week. And up to now, nobody said what they died for or what killed them. They do that, but as I know, uh, in Nigeria, life expectancy is like maybe 50 something uh, years for a, for a person. In US, it's almost 80. So are we living longer than US? No. Do we have less death than US, even with the COVID-19? I don't think so. So one thing that America does pretty good is that they don't hide um, things. They expose things as much as they, they know or they, they can. But in Africa, we don't even have the resources to dig deep and know exactly what's going on in our community. And uh, we're not all that good in exposing ourselves. Um, one adage in my community is that when your tooth decays, you suck it out. Uh, but Americans, if they are tooth decay, they will, they, if, if you're spending them, they run to a dentist. They, they show somebody that they, they have pain. And uh, so there are just some other cultural aspects to this. And um, I'm, I'm not saying that COVID is more or less, but I just want to see it from a different perspective. Mm. All right, ladies and gentlemen, if you're watching Focus on Liberia, we are having a special conversation here. It's a panel discussion on COVID-19. We have a team here from the Dakota County. Uh, they are part of the Dakota County team that is fighting COVID-19. We have been talking about what a virus is, how it has impacted all. We look at the red, we look at the safety tips, how helpful are they. At long lives, uh, we have our scene. Uh, it was being said that the only way, uh, the best way to fight this thing is to get a vaccine that will protect us when we get it. Now the vaccine is here, but there are other concerns. First of all, before we get to those concerns, uh, should we be hopeful now? Should we be happy now that we have vaccine? Yeah, yeah. Uh, can you admit uh, Belita? I think she, she oh, she's okay. back. All right. I'll take care of that. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead. The vaccine is here now. Should we be hopeful? We should be hopeful. We should be hopeful that we have something that uh, will help to protect us against the virus. Whereas we didn't have nothing, we we're not sure of, you know, if you, you, you get in, in contact with somebody and uh, you could catch or you could get the virus at any time. And we see the death rate. And so, I mean, it is hope. Well, and, I'm what? About the vaccine, the vaccine, she said she gave us hope. The vaccine is not a go-to ticket that says it's going to kill you if you have the virus or it's going to kill the virus. It is just a way of protecting you, of creating an immunity against the virus. So if the, the, the most, if we have the majority of us build up immunity, we will develop what is called herd immunity or community immunity or social immunity so that we protect those who cannot get the vaccine. It's almost like how, like not everybody in the world got the TB vaccine, but we had a lot of people who got it. So that way we stopped the spread of TB from having to be a pandemic in the world today. So it's similar, even the flu vaccine, not everybody get it, but the group that get it kind of stopped a huge population from not getting too sick or everybody getting sick. We're not saying when you get the vaccine, you won't get sick. 
but we are hopeful that if you get the vaccine, the symptoms might be mild and not as deadly as the corona is killing people now. But let's say if you can turn your phone sideways so we can have a better picture. Oh, uh, you is that better now? Great. So, okay. so stay on the on the vaccine. Uh, you, you, you let, let's talk about how it is, uh, and we'll get to the conspiracies around the vaccine. They are all out there, but let's talk about what it is and what it's supposed to do. Who is taking it now? What is the process? And uh, if you are, if any of you have taken it or you are administering it, just let us know. I've taken it. Tell us more. How you feel? I feel good. I took it about a week. This past Monday is about a week. So I'm two weeks out to get my next uh, dose because you have to take, I took the Pfizer. So the Pfizer is three weeks apart from dose one to dose two. And then I think Madonna is four weeks apart. So I took it. There were some side effects that they talk about that you will have. Some people had fevers. I had the chills for the night before. I must admit, I was like, okay, I had something. My husband was like, it's just in your head. But no, I don't think it was in my head because I did have the chills. I was really cool. But those are that was one of the side effects. And what may is is a side effect, but it also gave me this hope, this sense that my body was building up antibodies against the, the the whatever vaccine that I got, because it's not the live virus. People might say the vaccine is a live virus. No, it is not. It is not like a live, it's not a like a, a kill virus. You are not, they're not taking the virus and putting it in you. The, the virus is a, the vaccine is a different kind of thing. It has things like lipids in it, which lipid is almost like Let's say a lot of stuff we eat every day has lipids in it. Maybe we'll say like maybe some low oil kind of base. It has potassium chloride in it. It has sodium chloride in it. And it has the messenger RNA. And then I there are some things that people say it messes with your DNA. No, it's just sending you a message that, okay, you have something in your body. You have to start building up response to that's what the messenger RNA is. It's not going to your DNA. So I got it. I had chills. Most other people who I talked to had chills too as well. So I didn't get fever because I checked my temperature. I was like, I wanted to make sure I checked my temperature. My arm was a little sore. Like I get the flu vaccine. It's a little sore for a day, but then it went away. So I'm waiting for the second dose and I'm excited about it. Jules, any experience? And uh, first of all, what is this vaccine supposed to do? Uh, I'm not a medical practitioner, but uh, from um, everyday experience, vaccine is meant to protect us against uh, the virus, against the attack of the virus. And the way I see, I'm not taking it because I'm not uh, um, on the front line uh, medical pra practice. However, if it comes to the state that I, that I need to take it, I will, because I do take flu shot. Uh, we have three children. They are up to date on, on uh, immunization. Um, I, you know, we, we really respect science. I'm an engineer by, by practice, and um, I don't see any way I would be doubting um, about those who have really put effort all their life trying to um, you know, bring something that will save our life. And we see that it works. Uh, chicken pox, when I, when I was young back in Nigeria and measles, those things were common, but we hardly see them now. So because science is working. So why, sh why should I spend too much time doubting what is working when I have my own thing that I need to focus on to make the society better? So, but as we know, human beings have different ways to, to reason and um, different ways to um, uh, have judgment and everybody can do, uh, people are free to do that, but uh, it's necessary that uh, we really leave something science to the scientists and the, those uh, who are in charge, we leave to them. If they mess up, we hold them accountable. 
But I will spend my time doubting and, uh, you know, sowing seed of discord in the community and just coming up with something that I'm not even qualified to do. So that's how I see it. And um, it, it, uh, people, I really um, encourage people to take it. Um, instead of somebody going to ICU when they have COVID and they have all the kind, all, all kinds of metals being inserted into their system, tubes, and uh, help them to breathe because they cannot do that. They're taking vaccine and having some uh, side effect, effects, if that is the case, I think is, is better, you know, given the, the, the rock and, uh, and the hard uh, surface, which one do we choose? I think something that will save our lives, to me, is no brainer. And patient, there are a lot of uh, news out there about this vaccine, and I will give you a few. Some say it's the mark of the beast. Some say they are trying to kill the black people. Some say uh, Bill Gates, and they're trying to uh, put a chip in also that they can make money, and you just name it. They're all out there. I know you've heard them. What are you hearing in your place of work, and what is the assurance that the people are not organizing to kill all of us? that you can give us? Well, I've heard all the things you listed the, about the vaccine, but uh, like uh, Drew Redley said, uh, there are scientists that got together and uh, research that were done to help people to help protect lives and not to destroy them. So I believe the science is at work. And I also believe this is not the mark of the beast because there's so many things that precede the mark of the beast. So uh, Christians still need to go and do the research and so they can know when the mark of, be of the beast will really be here. And uh, the vaccine is, um, the giving of the vaccine or distribution of the vaccine is being scheduled. I mean, there are different places and different, you know, we, we're not all taking it at the same time, but uh, like first one group has taken it in, you know, like every other distribution they are scheduled to it. And where I'm in, at my workplace, I mean, we have not had it yet, but we will be having it like next week. We are scheduled for it to come to our facility. So um, we're looking forward to all that the government need to do to protect the lives of the people. Thank so you. people should stop all those uh, rumors and they should believe what they need to believe for the good of the people. Yeah, thank you. Let me read a few comments and then we'll be winding this down. Uh, John Moyu, vaccines take 10 to 15 years from concept to development. The fact that the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines only took six to nine months is cause of for concern. The clinical or human trials for one company had only 775,000 participants, including only 4,000 blacks. That's clearly too small a sample size. I foresee a rush. Uh, a rash of side effects that will force both companies to conduct phase four clinical trials to address the side effects, such as reports of uh, fast paralysis, breathing problems, and some of those. Uh, Sam Waller, in the recent report, Liberia had 1,779 COVID cases and only 83 deaths. Uh, that's a remarkably low. He also said Liberians were in large part not wearing masks all of their gatherings. James Jensen, some put the marks in their pockets, handbags. They quickly get it to enter groceries. Is this a safety means? Secondly, some of our friends never grew up taking shower at least two times a day. Is washing hands and not taking shower for a day or two more of a safety? I'm not going there with the taking bath issue, but uh, those are some of your comments. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to I want to talk about the vaccine. The person talk about the rush. The the it takes six to seven years. I I we understand vaccine takes six to seven years, but this is a different case. This vaccine was approved under the emergency use authorization because we have a pandemic. It's not only a national pandemic; it's a global pandemic. So in time of crisis stuff changes. I understand there are probably not a lot of efficacy and safety involved and not a lot of blacks, but we should take into consideration too that not a, black, a lot of blacks like to get involved into studies because there have been cases in the past, like one case, the Tuskegee experiment in the past where black felt that they were, they, 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 where they treated blacks unfairly. And a lot mm -hmm. of times 
Blacks, not only African American, but all Blacks. You know how we are. We don't like to even go to the doctor sometimes when we're sick or even for our routine checkup. So I'm sure they asked people to participate, but Blacks were not willing because it was like, oh, they're going to use me as a guinea pig. So I'm sure that's why the numbers were not a lot. I'm not saying the vaccine is like will be 100%, but the same Food and Drug Authority in the USA that gave okay for them to bring your food and your other medication to you. They sat down, they look at it, they went through the steps to say, okay, is this, 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 maybe the steps that it normally would take a whole year to do one step in this vaccine because it was an emergency use. Yeah. They probably did those two, they probably combined steps and just did them in one month. So instead of taking it one step at a time, they did one or two steps together to be able to get it quickly, to be able to help to, to stop this pandemic from ravishing the whole world and causing, like Jude said, economic is broken. There are a lot of people who lost businesses. Some people have lost jobs. Some people, this is causing emotional and mental breakdown throughout the country or throughout the world, including the U.S. It's among everybody. It's not only those who are getting sick who are having more health issues. There are a lot of other health issues that arise from this virus than they were before. There are a lot of other people who are depressed, who are having anxiety. So this was just a chance to say, hey, let's do this. Let's speed the process up so that we can get it there to be able to stop all these things from happening. I understand his concern. And then two, you also have the right to refuse it and you have the right to accept it. They're not going to knock you down and say you have to take the vaccine. No, when you go to the site to register for your vaccine at your facility, especially for healthcare workers, there is a button that say, I decline and you have the right to decline a vaccine. Yeah. So you have that as well. Yeah, um, I just want to quickly add that um, for full disclosure, I'm not a medical expert, but I know that from discussions in the um, medical uh, industry, there have been other strains of uh, uh, viruses like uh, swine flu, uh, bird flu. So they, have, uh, they, they belong to the same family or to the same class. But sometimes one of them will just go astray and then start to have an issue in the community. So there had been research on, on virus for years. I mean, I mean, decades people have done research. So this was just a step. The, the COVID-19 vaccine was a step to what has been done in the past. They didn't start from zero to start researching today. So people have been preparing because they know that pandemic could come anytime. So in terms of time, 15 years, 10 years, its number, but if there are systems in place anticipating that something like this will happen, that will reduce the time as we saw in this vaccine. Mr. Sear? Yep, and the question I'm asking here is, if you look at the recovery, there has been a lot of recovery, not many mass in the death. So if many people are recovering without taking the vaccine, why will they take the vaccine if some of the side effects being reported uh, can be harmful to some people as you know being reported? So Mr. C, let me get let me uh the, like I we said like I said from the beginning, this virus is new. So there are a lot of things that we don't still know. Mm -hmm. Unlike the like the chicken pot, which was studied a long time ago, that if you catch the chicken pot virus, you don't have to take because you build immunity. We don't know if you build immunity if you take the if you get the if you get the coronavirus. That's yeah. still being under study. We don't know. For a while, they say like maybe some studies say or some. Uh, uh, infectious disease people would say maybe for six, 90 days, you have a little immunity. But who knows whether after that 90 days, your immunity goes away. So that's why taking the vaccine, even after you've gotten the virus, is a good thing because you don't know if you have that immunity. They still don't even know if you can get reinfected because some people have gotten reinfected. So this is a new virus that is not like cookie cutter like the chicken pox where 
if I, I, cause I caught the cook, the chicken pox before. So I don't have to, I build the immunity. Every time they test you, you have it, you have your antibiotics. So you build immunity. So this one is still new. We, they haven't seen people build immunity yet, but who knows? Maybe after they continue studying, studying people might build immunity, but it's good to just better to be safe than sorry. Mm-hmm. Cause you don't know, maybe the first time you caught it, you were have mild symptoms. Who know if you can re if you can get reinfected with the virus? Whether this time around your symptoms will be worse than the first time. Yep. Yeah, and I want to add again to what my sister just said. Um, yes, a lot of people recover um, when they uh, caught COVID, and um, but when it comes to side effects, a lot of them still have side effects. And uh, as we know, this is new. For we don't know how the side effects is going to evolve years to come. So some people have um, um, brain hemorrhage. Uh, some people have st- multiple minor st- uh, strokes. The all kinds of studies they are finding out how the virus attacks. You know, we, all, we we've been told that is is um, the, the the focus area is in the lungs, but because it's a part of is a is a blood pathogen, it you know, travels with blood. It goes all over the body, even to the brain. So even those who have recovered, they still see some um, issues with, with some of their brain um, composure or images. Uh, so the, the, the impact is that people recover a lot, but side effects is huge, you know, from uh, speeches to, um, to other uh, um, uh, issues uh, that medical uh, uh, experts are seeing. Because uh, because of uh, COVID, so uh, it's still it's wide cut there. So um, it doesn't mean that people will recover. That everybody will just recover. Everything is uh, kumbaya. No, it's not yet there. So we we'll just be on the safe uh, on the side of, of caution. Yeah, that, that's true. I have a friend who recover and say, Dennis, I won't wish this thing even on my en- on my worst enemy because my entire system is now messed up. But uh, thank you uh, for this. Uh, we need to draw down our curtains and uh, we will go around the room. You know, anything that we didn't ask that you still want to mention concerning coronavirus, we can do so now as we educate our audience. Okay, I'll, okay go ahead. Uh, okay, so I'll, I just want to talk about um, the impact of COVID on businesses. Um, we know that uh, a lot of African immigrants in Minnesota, we do small businesses because the workforce usually reject us or they underpay us. And the next thing we do is that we'll start our business. We want to be our CEO, we want to be um, uh, drive our, our bus. However, uh, with this COVID-19, we saw that um, a lot of small businesses are suffering. So some of them closed down. Uh, we didn't have the resources. We were not prepared before the COVID. And even when, when there was palliative from federal government, from the state, and from other sources, we didn't take uh, advantage of that. And even when we tried, some of us, we didn't qualify. Uh, let, let me just go back to the PPP, which is Paycheck Protection Program by federal government to help small businesses, which was a loan. But if you spend it the way they wanted you to spend it, uh, that loan will be forgiven. So eventually, it's, uh, uh, it's free money. So when that happened uh, at the very beginning of the pandemic, like May this year, we were not ready because we are just solo uh, uh, solo uh, business people in most cases. And then um, I, I, when we are doing business, it's easy for us to um, buy something, be our accountant, be our auditor, be everything, and then just run business at that small scale. But when there is a need for documentation and process, as we saw, which was needed to help us uh, get help uh, because of pandemic, we didn't have uh, those skills to get ourselves ready. The tax return, the documentation process to apply for PPP or other grants. And then as a result, we didn't get the help we needed. So um, we know that um, federal governments approved another payment, PPP, I think three hundred something billion dollars. The first one they did, the first round they did this year, it lasted only for one week. And then before we could even call our accountant or somebody to help us, the money was gone. So this time around, we just want to tell our people who are into businesses to get ready. 
by now, most people have done their uh, tax return for this year, uh, for last year, because they will need it. And if you have not done that, do it as soon as possible. Because once this money is open, as usual, those who have system and those who have process in place, we take the money and then we will be at home and we don't get the support we need. So um, visit uh, Dakota County website, uh, talk to your city, um, talk to anybody you know how to get ready so that once this money comes as a business person, you get the help you need. If big corporations can get millions and billions of dollars, like airline, they give them $25 billion in this current uh, dispensation. So if they can get that money to be in business, so talk about uh, somebody who's just trying to survive, why can't we get the one they, they, the one they will give us uh, by not just being prepared? So I urge everybody, ask questions and then get ready. It's your money, it's from federal government, it's from our taxes. And if you don't take it, somebody will take it, somebody will be richer, somebody will do better than we do, and then we still pay taxes and then we get poorer. So uh, that's just one big thing in our community and people should really be prepared. And uh, if there's anything else we can do, um, ask us questions after this or, you know, find ways we can connect with people. ADC is African Development Center, they help. ASA is in Brooklyn Park. ASA is an African Career Resource, uh, Educational Resource Center, they do help. Uh, our organization, MAC, we do help. There are many organizations that are out there to help if you have questions, so, so that we take advantage of what belongs to us. That's just one thing I really want to emphasize about uh, uh, the impact of uh, small business and how to get the resources available to us. Thank you. Melinda? So I just want to end by saying to everybody that COVID is real. We need to do our best to stop the spread or slow the spread of COVID. Wear your mask over your nose. Keep your social distance. Avoid gatherings indoor gathering or more than what the governor said, 10 people. If you want to have an indoor gathering, get tested. So that way, at least you all know the status of everybody within that home. If you want to have more than two families within a home, let everybody get tested. There are three centers all throughout the city or all throughout Minnesota. In Dakota County, and you can go on the Dakota County website and you can find where to get tested in Brooklyn Park. And it's free. You don't need your insurance. You can make an appointment, but you can also walk in to go and get tested to these sites. It's free. And the results come in, in as close as like 24 hours to 48 hours. So like if you're planning a party on the weekend and everybody's coming, send them a message, say, hey, go get tested to be able to come to the party. So that way we know you are negative so people can come and mingle. So that way too, it also help to uh, slow the spread. Wash your hands. Let us be safe and keep everybody safe. You being safe is not only saving you, it's saving your family and the community. Let us be our brother's keeper. We need to stop the spread of this virus and slow the spread of this virus. It's real, people. I see it every day. I haven't lived it, which I thank God every day that I haven't caught it, but I see it. I see what it do. The myth was there before that when the virus started, everybody was like, oh, if you have underlying healthcare condition, it's you who get the worst. No, there are people who are healthy people who get this virus and they get the worst and they are the worst. And some of them had to be intubated. Some of them had to have trick placed before they even leave the hospital because the virus damaged them so bad. Even the older people who some of them came in and we thought they were going to be sick. Those ones walk out, but some of the 52 year old people didn't walk out because they were so sick. It treated them badly. So we need to know that this is real. We need to wear our masks and keep social distance. You all have a happy new year. And I pray that we all see 2021 and that it is a more, uh, like more prosperous year, more happy and more blessed years that we can put this behind us and talk about it in the past. And as we go forward, we all are able to say, hey, we survived the 2020 pandemic and then we can be part of history. Thank you all. Yeah, you. and uh, yeah, I want to thank you, my sister Valetta, those of you at the front line, you know, taking the 
fight to COVID and uh, all the m- m- sacrifices you guys make. I really appreciate you and I appreciate uh, all the work all the medical experts do to keep us safe. I also appreciate uh, our patients for organizing this, uh, for the Fire City International, for putting this together. It's, reaching, uh, it's, um, it's um, enriching and rewarding to our community and also the Dakota County for sponsoring this. So I really appreciate this. And also our our MCs and DJs and the tech people. Thank you guys. Uh, I really appreciate your production and uh, I love uh, uh, the work you guys are doing. And I hope we'll be doing more next year. Happy New Year and uh, more blessings to everybody. Happy, happy New Year as well. We couldn't have ended the year better than a program on COVID-19. This COVID that has devastated our lives so much, killed so many people, wrecked our economy and caused so much hardship on our people. So it's very important. We are happy to host this program, educating our population about COVID-19 safety measure and its devastating consequences it have had on our people. Thank you all for coming. Back to you and Sonny. And thank you all for watching. Thank you for coming and providing this much in the information. COVID-19, we can't emphasize enough, has changed our life in the most serious way. And so we need to give it all the serious attention that you know is needed uh, so that we can be able to survive this thing. Uh, I mean, the rates continue to go up, even though the vaccine is here, but we still need to keep fighting and we can only fight together to win this battle against the Delhi disease. On that note, folks in cyberspace, our closing song is taking us home. And bye-bye. Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year. We all love you, man. Bye.